the moment and he was on the back straight and he's just looks like he's just turned it in that looks dead stick to me well yeah he, he, he was due for a pit stop pretty soon now I hope he hasn't run it out of fuel do you know what Jeremy you're spot on well, I, look at I, I that can't. Sebastian Baudet what went wrong his last pit stop was um he's, that is dead stick mate I think you've nailed it he had a splash of fuel, um, what, 35 minutes ago. Oh, hang on, he's looking around the back. No, I don't think I don't think it can be fuel. Well, it's drive then, isn't it? If it's not fuel, it's drive, and that's what he's looking at. Is that what he's looking at? Looking at the gearbox, maybe? Has he got a long piece of pole that he can stick in there? Yeah, it's, uh, that's what it is. He's got it doesn't very often on those cars, does it, Doctor? Right, okay, he's pulling that out of the way. I think he knows that something has massively gone awry. It is so unusual to see any of these works cars. We saw a Peugeot, of, uh, we saw an Audi, of course, of Alan McNish just over a year ago, blow the crown wheel pinion when battling with the seven car at Silverstone. But still, it's like this is so unusual, Jeremy. It's that car, I think, that won at Silverstone, isn't it, a couple of weeks ago, one of them, but also earlier in the season. But uh, that certainly appears to be curtains for that number seven car. And hasn't got the 70% as we get the first chance to say that. Yeah, so, that's right. no point for that car. Oh, that is the BMW number 56. It was uh, fourth position in the GT category. It's dropping down. Dirk Muller has a problem. Being told on the pit lane radio as if he needed to know it's coming apart. He's got to get that car in without doing any further damage. That's pretty decent driving, you know, by Dirk Muller. As he's trying to keep it in now. Has that been contact as well? It's not really super hot here. Hey, you're going to continue. No, it's actually quite cool conditions, and much cooler than it was the last couple of days. Being told he's staying in the car, Dirk uh, Muller. I love the calmness of the voice from the pit wall. You know, the race could be going out the window. No, nope, you're staying in. Don't worry. Uh, take your marks here. Yeah, Bobby uh, Rahal has been, he's been around the sport a little while, hasn't he? Himself has <laughs> won everything there is to win, really, as a driver, both in open wheel and in sports cars. And uh, Kelly Sabas is uh, down in the BMW pit. As we see the 56 BMW come to a stop. Topping it off with some fuel. Now remember, there are issues with that left rear. Before they said that the last reports were that there seemed to, the problem seemed to have been fixed, but they never really knew what the issue was earlier on in this race. And now we see uh, that we've got a puncture on this one again as the crews are working on that left rear. And the 56 is back out. And they'll be taking a very, or at least the Dunlop technicians will be taking a very close look at that cover that's just come off the rear. It has come back, not entirely intact in fairness, but they'll be worried that something's catching there. This is a right-handed circuit, Jeremy, so you're leaning on the left side tyres, and the worry will be there. At least then there's been a problem underneath the bodywork somewhere. Now, the big drama of the last few minutes, uh, with due respect to the 56 BMW, is the fact that Persian number 7 will not be scoring any points as it stands at the moment. It's on the cutout at turn number 5 through to the back straight. The problem is the gearbox. He radioed in, that's what he told the crew, apparently no warning. As you saw, he was simply on the track, started slowing down and pulling over. It's a gearbox problem. Whether they're going to be able to get it back, whether they're going to be able to do any work, they don't know at this point. Seapass is out. His helmet is off. There's a certain sense of resignation. We've seen pictures like this before, Jeremy. Remember the a couple of years ago? With Montani jumping out the car, pulling off the back work bodywork, hoping that there was something he could do to get that car back moving again. There wasn't, and all of the Peugeots went sick in that race. Surely we're not going to see that again from the Lions this weekend. No, let's hope not, certainly. But Sebastian Bourdain there, he's sort of wandering around kind of aimlessly, really. He's just he's clearly frustrated with that failure. Uh, in, the, in the car there, but you know, we talked about it earlier on, all Peugeot needed to do, really, 
to glimpse the manufacturer's classification in the Intercontinental Le Mans Cup was get one of its cars to the finish of the race. Uh, and uh, right now it seems that they'll be down to 50% strength. I suppose you can count the Orica car. No, you can't. I don't think that's eligible for points. Ah, oh, of course. You're no. right. No, you're absolutely right. At least the Orica car can take some points from Audi, though. And that's what they'll be hoping to do with that car. Of course, leading the race at the moment, but on a completely different pit stop strategy. The number eight, of course, has now got itself back up into second place because of the pit stops around it. So Montani in second place, with Timo Bernard having taken that pit stop, what? 10 minutes or there about to go a little bit longer than that he is in third and they're all now back on the lead lap and Timo Bernard looking at forward from the number one car that is Frank Montani yeah, right ahead of him they, they've just swapped places they have just swapped places look how much Frank Montani has pulled out over him that's a bad way so I think this car the number eight car should be on the pit lane fairly soon it was last into the pits on lap 51 and uh, maybe another yeah two or three laps possibly before I think we'll see the great car on pillow but boy look how much he's pulled out over Timo Bernard in that one lot well all of a sudden Montani doing 10s and 11s and Timo back to 14s and he didn't seem to have a load of traffic there I said earlier that McNish in the two car hadn't done a much less than a 14 for a while he's just done a 13 as the Corvettes in the pit lane well at least one of them the four Corvette is in. We see Ian Magnuson getting out and Oliver Gavin will take over driving duties here. So far everything looks to be going according to plan as they've got some fresh Michelins ready to put on. Meanwhile, the number three car went straight behind the wall just a little bit ago. I got word from the team manager, Doug Feehan, that they had a gearbox leak. They're still assessing that. They don't know how long that fix will take, but they've gone straight behind the wall. This is a team that prides itself on these clean pit stops, although they've already been penalized once for running over uh, pit equipment. Good. What was that team? The four